Welcome in everyone to the brand new Stadium Gaming YouTube channel. I'm Sean and today we are going to be opening the PlayStation 5's brand new controller, the DualSense. Rest in peace, of course, to the DualShock, gone but not forgotten. Out with the old and with the new, let's get right into it. Here is our box right here, beautiful box. I already took off the little sticky tape there because I don't need you guys struggling to see me take that off, which I did, of course. And this box is really like stuck in there. So here's my beautiful table that you guys can look at for a second while I rip open the bottom of the box to try to slide this out. It's, it's really jammed in there. This is perfect footage. Amazing new YouTube channel. Here we go. Let's pull this out. Maybe. Oh, all right. Here we go. Nice little white box. Look at it from all, a bunch of different angles. Let's open this bad boy up. Not, all right. Nothing wants to open. Nothing. There we go. Here it is. The dual sense. Let's open this bad boy up. Look how beautiful it is. Check this out. Nice little close up. It is weighty. I wouldn't say it's as heavy as like an Xbox One controller, but it's definitely heavier than a DualShock 4. Sticks feel great. Great texture to them. The grippiness of the controller feels great. It looks so high quality. Look at all that. Let's try to zoom in on the grips there. So if the little dots are actually the PlayStation symbols, let me see if you can actually tell in the camera. Eh, kind of. Cool little nerdy tidbit there. Let's see what else is in the box. Nothing actually, but sticks, very clicky, sound good, look good, love the texture on them. Buttons look good. Yeah, take it all in. Next gen goodness. Look at that D pad. D pad's beautiful. Feels great. As an avid fighting game player, a, a D pad is really, really important to me clickiness of the share button and the options buttons these controllers they look great l1 and r1 feel fantastic the triggers feel great you get you might have that same issue with the dualshock 4 where if you lay it on the ground and kind of slide it they might press so you know all the netflix and hbo max fast forwarding playstation button works just fine or feels fine i should say of course it works and there you go. All the buttons feel great, just like it should. Here is a direct comparison with a DualShock 4. I'm really liking this. Strong first impressions here. I hope it's coming through as well on camera. Let's slide that out of the way. Nothing else is in the box. Here is this, uh, the manual that I'm gonna read to you completely. No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that to you guys. Would you listen to me read? A manual here. Sit here and read the whole thing for 10 minutes. No, of course not. Let's get some more. Look at that beautiful close-up. Take it in. This is the controller you're going to be using for the next who knows how long. Five, six, seven years. Triggers go in just fine. Very, very, very anxious to check out the adaptive feedback on the triggers. The haptic feedback on the whole controller. I don't think that's gonna, I don't know how we're gonna get that on PC or if developers are gonna add it to the PC versions of their games, but let's get right into a game. All right, so now that we unboxed it, let's uh, plug it in with our USB-C. And it feels so weighty. I love it, I love it. Plug this bad boy in and uh, let's see how it works. You'll see here right when I plugged it in. Oh, yeah, there you go. You can see the see the around the touchpad right here with the orange lights. They're kind of pulsating. I don't know if it comes fully charged or if that means it is charging, but that's pretty cool. Um, the light bar, very controversial aspect of the DualShock 4. It seems to be incredibly smaller here. Um, you know, that helps with PlayStation VR and things like that. So I don't know if when I'm playing, the light bar up here is going to light or if it's just gonna to stick to the sides here. Um, but I guess we're about to find out. So you will see right out of the box, I haven't done anything. I literally plugged in the controller, let Windows recognize it as a device, and it is working in Mortal Kombat 11. 
right out of the box. No anything. I didn't have to do anything. I have this game on Steam, and it seems to be working just fine. Um, as you can see on the bottom, my buttons, it's reading it as an Xbox controller. With the DualShock 4, it would read it as my PlayStation buttons. So um, I don't know if Steam just hasn't completely integrated DualSense into this yet or when we're going to get an update for that. I'm pretty sure it's not a game by game basis. So I don't think like NetherRealm has to do anything with it. So let's go into a game and... Ooh, okay. So it seems like I hit X on this to go into the fight section and it asked me if I want to quit the game. So I assume that means X and B or X and circle are swapped. So let's see, I'm gonna hit X for no and it brought me back. Okay, so, so circle is confirm and X is, sorry, it's really hard to try to separate the X and the, the A and the B and the X and the circle. Um, so let's go into Steam and figure out what is going on here. So as we can see here, the only detected controller we have is this wireless controller. So how I got to here, if uh, you guys need help with this, is going into Steam, settings, controller, general controller settings right here. So you just click on your wireless controller right here, and we go through it. We are in. Another thing I had to do was go into the Steam properties of the game here and set this to forced on i used to have that set to forced off because i think that helps with it recognizing the dualshock 4 and giving you dualshock 4 button inputs but with this since we still don't have native support um i suppose it just doesn't read it as a playstation controller so if you don't mind getting the xbox button inputs on there there might be a way to change it um feel free to look for that but for now uh, let's just jump into a quick practice for a couple seconds and see how this feels. All right, everything is working just fine. It feels perfect. No input delay. All my buttons are coming out at the risk of getting, uh, you know, you know, the whole Mortal Kombat YouTube fun of all the, the blood and the gore. They don't really like that very much, so I'm not going to be playing this too much. Just wanted to check it out. Everything works. Everything feels great. Get a little stance switch, get a little everything. Got my quarter circles down, all that good stuff. So now let's move on. So I have loaded up Hades on the Epic Game Store and it doesn't seem to be working at all. It doesn't read that I have any button inputs and I even tried DualShock 4 PC, which of course this isn't a DualShock 4, but you know, I thought I'd give it a shot and that didn't work either because it obviously the DualSense, how it connects with the computer, how it interacts with the computer is different than a DualShock 4. So at least as of right now, it doesn't seem like an Epic Game Store game will work. All right, minor update. When I opened up The Witcher 3, it did not work natively at all. It didn't recognize that I had a controller. However, I found a program called X360CE, and it actually did recognize my DualSense controller and let me map it. So DS4 Windows didn't work, but X360CE did. So if you don't mind having your having your computer think that your DualSense controller is an Xbox 360 controller, it seems to work just fine. It works with Hades also on the Epic Game Store, so I assume it would work with Fortnite as well. So at least you can go with this route where it works with Steam, and then you just have to use X360CE to work on it. basically any other game, at least until Sony officially pushes out some drivers or somebody hacks it or something like that to where we get native support on the computer. The final verdict is I absolutely love this controller. I love how it just feels sitting in my hands. It's a little bit girthier than the DualShock 4 and it's kind of like a good halfway point in between the Xbox One and the DualShock 4. I love how each individual button feels to press. It looks like a premium high quality device, looks and feels like it. I love the D-pad. It's kind of like a hybrid in between the PlayStation Vita D-pad and the DualShock 4 D-pad. Um, big fan of that. Triggers feel awesome, awesome, awesome. And whether or not Sony or each individual developer or Steam or whoever needs to do what they need to do to get this to be perfect on the PC, since this is a more PC centric video, I do have to warn you, like you saw here, you do have to jump through a couple more hoops to get it to work just fine on a computer. But it took me not even 20 minutes, I think, to get all that taken care of. So 
not too big of an issue once the PlayStation 5 actually comes out and you're using it for that. I'm sure you're gonna completely fall in love with it and hopefully the same experience will come over to the PC until then. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe. There's gonna be more coming where this one came from. Check out my music on my other channel. Follow me on Twitter at Stadium Beats and listen to my podcast. You guys know where to find all that stuff. But if you don't, it's in the description below. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.